distribution of cut. This video will uh, try to show viewers how to take a stand, in this case a 100-year-old oak hickory stand, but it's just a model for other kinds of stands we might work with. The process of distributing cut is the same. What will only change is the desired conditions of the future stand, relative stand density, changes in structure, and the like. So we have already figured out how to produce a stand table with descriptive statistics that are important for us to understand what the current stand is. And so you see here a conventional uh, stand table showing diameter class numbers of trees per acre and, and the calculation of basal area as a total for each of those diameter classes. That Those numbers are then summed to get total stand level statistics of 166 trees per acre in this particular case. 119.8 square feet of basal area and then this QSD of 11.5 and, and we recognize that once you have those statistics you can then calculate relative stand density and for our old kickery stand we've been using the uh, Gingrich stocking chart which seems appropriate and looks pretty good here for this particular stand. This stand only works in terms of relative stand density if we consider trees in the main crown canopy which are trees four inches and greater. So as you'll see, I'll work with this data. I will ignore the trees from one to three inches, knowing that when we actually do the shelter wood, we'll likely have to remove those anyways. But we're not going to account for them in, in terms of distributing this cut because we're interested only in the main, um, the main crown canopy. We want to create a visual graphical approach to distributing the cut. And, and one way to do that one fruitful way to do that is to graph basal area as a function of DBH class. And so over here I have graphed for initial stand conditions that basal area as a function of diameter class for trees four inches and up. You see the sawtooth, jagged, peaked and troth graph uh, basal area distribution. And when you have a small stand, and this was only an acre in size, you can expect that sort of uneven distribution. I think in a, in a larger stand, we might have some of these troughs and, and uh, peaks smoothed. But that, given what it is, um, we, we work with it. One important aspect of trying to distribute a cut is to envision a more smoothed basal area distribution. You can actually draw by hand a curve that fits through these peaks and troughs and at least squares knowing that we have excesses in terms of peaks above that curve and deficiencies in terms of troughs. We try to balance those in this least squares kind of way. In Excel, you can actually fit a trend line, um, in this case a quadratic trend line, that allows that to be expressed, that least squares approach to be expressed visually just as shown here. So that's our basal area distribution initially. When we look to distribute the cut, we look to think about what we want the future stand to look like in terms of distribution of basal area structure. And with that, once we distribute that structure, we can actually envision how much of the stand is left so we get a measure of density. So this curve that I'm slowly moving in is one I've already fashioned ahead of time that I know will actually produce a desirable solution. When we distribute cut, we try to understand how to get from one initial condition to the second desired condition as represented by this new curve. An important aspect of the initial stand and the future stand is trying to understand the, the distribution of basal area and where the midpoint of that distribution is. And I'm pointing at about the midpoint right now on the original curve. It's about 16 inches diameter, so half of the basal area is below that and half of that above that. It's the medial um, point the midpoint of that frequency of basal area. In our new, new uh, community, we've actually shifted that to the right a little bit, almost to 18 inches, by refashioning this curve. The difference between our, our future stand, the second curve, and the first curve is, is where the cut is going to occur in order to recreate a new curve, a new distribution that is more smooth, doesn't have any many, as many peaks and troughs, and, and the rule of thumb that we use to create many types of silvicultural cuts, partial cuts, whether they're thinnings or shelter woods, is to cut primarily from below the average medial diameter of these trees here and, and less from above. And that'll force diameter QSD in this case to go up significantly. In fact, we expect in a shelter wood it should go up two to six inches. 
if not more, depending on how many small trees there are. Uh, the medial diameter of, of, of the trees of, as diameter weighted by basal area should go up an inch or two. And, and I've described that for you already. In order to distribute the cut and start that process, we have to describe that residual stand condition on a per diameter class way. What we do is we take this curve that we fashioned, and you can do this by hand, and it may be that your first curve doesn't quite produce the desirable outcome, and the desirable outcome here is a stand with 40% relative stand density and a QSD that has gone up at least two, if not up to six plus inches in diameter. We're going to take our new curve and read directly off it as best we can by just sort of by, by just sort of seeing how much residual basal area we've left. We can see that we had basal area from four to nine inches in trees that size, but the new curve says we're going to cut all of those. And so my residual basal area for trees four inches and up is zero, all the way up to nine inches. So I've cut all the trees or plan to cut all the trees nine inches and less. The 10 inch trees, I'm only going to leave a half a square foot. Let me see that here. Here's 10 inches. There's that curve. I bring it over. I've got a half a square foot. For the 11 inch trees, right, you keep working your way up until you, you keep reading off of the curve and adding values over in this column here, which is the basal area column for your residual stand conditions. Once you've actually gone through all of the trees that way, you total your residual basal area, and we were, we're some portion of the way there to understanding what we've done to the stand in terms of both quadratic stand diameter and relative stand density. It is off of these basal area numbers that we calculate the residual number of trees. And so here's the formula embedded inside of this cell here. I take that basal area, here's E24 as a defined cell, I divide it by 0 0.005454 times the diameter squared. So this is the amount of basal area that a tree of that size, that 10 inch size, can, can hold. And if I've got that much basal area per acre, I can tell you how many trees per acre I have then to sort of match that up. And we need that match. And when we do so, and we total that for the whole residual stand, we end up with 34 trees per acre. So 34 trees per acre, 52.5 square feet of residual basal area. We can calculate QSD. Remembering that QSD is the diameter of the tree of average basal area. Some of the formulas that I've used in the uh, spreadsheet are defined below. Here's quadratic stand diameter, total basal area divided by total number of trees, this per acre basis divided by 0 0.005454, and you take the square root of that. We, we know how to do that. Once I have these three statistics, particularly once I have these two statistics, numbers of trees per acre and quadratic stand diameter, I can calculate relative stand density using the Gingrich equation. It took me five iterations of, of working this curve up and down and shifted and tipped until I got the right residual relative stand density 40%, and also produced a desirable increase in quadratic stand diameter. Again, this is an iterative process. This curve is a guess at first, and you keep shifting that curve up and down, tipping it right or left, shifting it left or right, in order to produce that desirable future condition. Once I have arrived at the right solution, 16.8 inch QSD in this case, and 40% relative stand density, and that iterative process should allow you to get right to your desired target relative density, which is 40% in our case. We then can see that we've actually have an opportunity to, to distribute our cut then. At least we understand how much we're going to cut. All we do is take the initial stand condition in basal area, or, or maybe better yet, eventually numbers of trees per acre, but we'll get to that in a bit. I have my residual, so I take my initial minus my residual, which is what this cell says, and I'll get how much basal area I am going to cut. And I can do the same thing for numbers of trees per acre. So out of the original 119.8 square feet of basal area, I'm going to cut 67.3. Out of the initial 166 trees per acre, I'm going to cut 132 of those trees. 
the second graph I've shown below here, just for your information, is the residual stand. And you can see that compared to the initial stand, I have smoothed the distribution of basal area. And with that smoothing of the distribution of basal area, I hopefully have more made more regular spacing of, amongst trees within the stand and caused a little more efficiency in, in utilization of growing space, but also um, carry and, and production of seed and, and control the environment that we might expect over a shelter wood. This distribution here matches that curve up there, so that's why I, I was able to produce the right solution without much fanfare and without much iteration because I had done that already. All right, so that's distribution of cut. The next video to watch to bring this to closure is marking guide development, which banks up off of this effort to distribute the cut.